Hey there! Welcome to Brown Dust Lab. This is a new series where I'm going to be explaining some of the more nuances in the game mechanics of Brown Dust. Today I'm going to be explaining everything about runes, from how they work and scale, what type of runes to use, and of course, min-maxing and optimizing your rune choices. First of all, I want to mention a system that people in Korea use to evaluate their runes. But for that, you need to understand how runes are calculated. They start with a fixed amount, but get increasingly better as you power them up. To understand the values that you get as you power up your runes, you're going to be using a point system. Every time you plus 1 a rune, it gets 1 point, except at plus 3, plus 6, and plus 9. For those, you get grades instead, which are powered up times 1, times 2, and times 3 at plus 3, plus 6, and plus 9 respectively. And for the grades themselves, C equals 1, B 2, A equals 3, and S equals 4. So in a plus 9 rune, you are getting 6 base points plus the variable points from your grades. For example, let's look at a CBS rune. You're getting 6 base points, then at plus 3 you get a C. So the plus 3 is a 1 multiplier and C is also a 1 multiplier. So that's 1 times 1. At plus 6 you get a B plus 6 is a 2 multiplier and B is also a 2 multiplier, so that's 2 times 2. At plus 9, you get an S. The plus 9 itself is a 3 multiplier, while S is a 4 multiplier, so you get 3 times 4. In the end, you get a 6 base plus 17 variable points. Those points that are variable with grades are the points we are looking at. This is a 17 point rune, for example. With the 6 base points, you get 23, which is the number you're gonna use to calculate the rune's worth. This is really important for rerolling runes with rune essences. 16 points is quite a good goal to have early on, but for good runes, you can reroll up to 18. 18 runes are considered really, really good. It's very difficult to acquire them with rerolling, and anything past that is not really worth it as it's too unlikely to happen. So you're usually only gonna get past 18 at the initial roll of the rune. Once again, those numbers are not taking into consideration the 6 base. I'm talking 16 and 18 point runes without the 6 base. So that's it for evaluating runes. Now let's talk about rune types and their rankings. As you can see, they don't all work the same way, so different types of runes are gonna get different scaling. You could separate those two in percentage and flat, but the fence percentage is also different, so it's isolated there as well. Now let's talk about how to ruin your units, shall we? You could separate all five room types into two different categories, defensive and offensive. Let's talk about the offensive ones first. To sum it up, you have units that benefit from crit, so you build them with crit, and units that do most of their damage through fixed damage, and those do not benefit from crit as the fixed damage portion does not crit. For those units with fixed damage, you just run 2 Assault to get as much damage as possible. And really, there's no in-between. There's a huge misconception that some units do not run crit, but that's not true at all. If it does not have fixed damage and it's an attack unit, you will run it with crit, period. As you may expect, building a crit unit is way more complicated than fixed damage units, as you have 3 different types of runes to pick from. And really, there's no combination that works best. This is highly dependent on the supports you're running, and of course your base stats. To min-max, you will have to run calculations to know what works best for your team with your supports and your attack units. But I'm gonna be talking about the most common cases and how to min-max those. So assuming you cap crit rate and you shoot with a critical unit, this is how a simplified damage formula would look like. Since your base attack and attack modifiers from supports aren't directly influenced by runes, we can get rid of those for the calculations. And just like that, we end up with the formula in blue. As you can see, crit damage is additive with a lot of different things. And that is why the calculations are heavily influenced by your support units. For this calculation specifically, you're gonna use legendary 6 star runes with 16 points, which are endgame runes, but are still reasonable to acquire. Such runes will give around 56.36% attack or 153.2% crit damage. And with that, we can assume that 1% attack is roughly equal to 2.7% crit damage. To make the calculations easier though, we will consider 55% attack and 150% crit damage. 
For supports, I'm gonna consider Fennecker and Sedis, which is a quite well balanced and common lineup for supports. Considering 15% crit rate and 50% crit damage base, plus the bonuses from the two supports, we get a total of 45% crit rate and 180% crit damage. What this means though is that with 45% crit rate, you need an entire fatal rune to reach the much desirable 100% crit rate mark. So that rune is an auto include. We have another one to balance attack or crit damage. In blue, you can see the values that we acquired previously. So what we're gonna try to do is find the local maximum for this function so we know what's the best value for attack and crit damage. The math is on screen. If you want, just go by it for yourself. I'm not gonna be explaining it in this video. The conclusion you reach is that to maximize the function, you would need to run 27.5% attack and 75% crit damage. Wow, what a pleasant coincidence. Those are the exact values for half runes. Okay, so what this means is that to maximize your damage, you should be running crit rate plus an attack percent slash crit damage split rune. That's it. That's how you maximize the damage. But remember when I said supports really matter in this case? Well, this calculation was done with Fennecker and Sedis. With a different support lineup, you will reach a different conclusion. But what this ends up telling us is that we should balance out attack and crit damage. Well, that is quite obvious, right? Of course, we have diminishing returns for every time you get attack, so going full attack is not gonna work as well, and of course the same goes for crit damage. So to diminish diminishing returns, what you need to do is balance out those two stats. Also, keep in mind we're just running a full fatal room in this case, because Sedis is the only one that buffs crit rate, Vanica doesn't. So for supports that end up buffing more crit rate than those two, you will want to run only half a crit rate rune. And then, whether you're running one full attack rune plus half a crit damage rune, or one full crit damage rune and half an assault rune, can only really be determined by doing the calculation for your specific team. To make it all easy to understand, let's follow this list. First, you're gonna be calculated the crit rate that you get from your supports. Then, you're gonna fill the rest up to 100% with fatal runes, which in 90% of the cases is either a full crit rate rune or half a crit rate rune. After that, you wanna balance out attack and crit damage, as I mentioned. And you might wanna run a damage calculation tool so you know what's the best distribution between those two. So if it ends up happening that you need a full fatal rune, you're just gonna run half a assault and half a rage for the next rune. But if you only need half a fatal rune, you can either go full assault and half rage or full rage and half assault. That's about it for offensive runes. Now let's talk about the defensive ones. Defense runes are way more simple and way more subjective as well. There's no min-maxing to be done. You will choose based on the unit you're running or the meta that you're in. For the calculations, we're gonna use the same type of rune that we did for the offensive runes, which means 56.36% HP versus 28.4% defense which means 2% HP is roughly equal to 1% defense. To make the calculations easier, we're gonna use 56% HP and 28% defense with a 10% base defense of the unit. A simplified effective HP calculation goes something like that. As you can see, base HP and rune flat HP are not gonna be considered for the calculations. So we have one plus rune HP percentage over one minus defense percentage. Very simple. If you know your functions right, you already know where this is going, but let's move on to the calculations. For now, let's just consider two HP runes versus two defense runes. By just adding the values, you can see that defense is significantly better than HP, and this difference only increases the better your runes are. What this tells us is that defense in general is significantly better for your effective HP. Oh wow, let's all use defense runes then, shall we? No. When you consider the amount of defense ignore and fixed damage units in the game, running defense is not always the best option. The damage based on enemy percent HP counterpart is nearly as relevant as fixed damage. So in the end, defensive runes are quite debatable. Run whatever you want. For units that for example have healing based on the HP percentage, or energy shield which gives more HP based on the HP you already have, that does not mean you should be running HP runes. That's just not how math works. And of course, you could also get one defense plus one HP rune. Seriously, there's no better option in this case. 
Now I want to talk about percentage versus flat for attack and HP runes. The calculations themselves can turn out to be quite complex, so I'm not going to be mentioning those in this video, I'm just going to give you the answer. For assault runes, if your attacker has below 600 attack, which is quite rare to be honest, in case you're running one assault rune, which is the case for example when you're already running like half a fatal rune and you want to balance assault and rage of course, so you run like half rage, half fatal and then you have one assault rune to complete. In that case, the best option is to go half percentage and half flat. And in case you only have space for half an assault rune, run it flat. And then, the exact same process can be applied to units with base attack between 600 and 800 and units with attack above 800. Vital runes have a little bit more variation, but they are still easy to follow. Though if you want to run something more complex like flat HP, percentage HP and defense on top, you'll have to run some other calculations. Something else that I want to mention about runes is that they are quite variable with the type of unit you're using. For example, if you have a unit that has extra scaling with say crit damage like Valjer does, you will run crit damage. Picking runes in that case is as easy as reading the skills themselves. What I'm talking about here with those runes is for units that don't benefit from any rune type specifically, which is most of them actually. Also, early on, maybe in your first weeks, it's not really that good to run crit in your attackers because it can be quite inconsistent. Instead, you could just run assault for now until you have better supports and better runes to back up your damage. And whew, that's it for this episode of BD Lab. I really hope this video was helpful, and if it wasn't, please leave some feedback so I can improve. Thank you and see ya.